Hello, my name is Karx82, and welcome back to my Greg Block tutorial series. Today, I'm going to be talking about battery buffers and transformers. Now, there are four different types of battery buffers. There's a one slot battery buffer that can take one battery, there's a four slot, can take four, nine, and sixteen. Now each of these batteries, we have a small sodium battery here. If we look, there's multiple tiers. In the earlier, the earlier tiers have multiple batteries. So we have small lithium, small cadmium, and small sodium. They all output one amp of 32 EU per tick, or whatever tier it is. So tier one is LV, 32 EU per tick. But they hold a varying charges. So this holds 50,000, this holds 100,000. This holds 75,000, and each require different processes to obtain. Um, sodium is probably the easiest to get, but lithium has the best charge. So like I said, each of these battery buffers outputs one amp. So if we look at the first one, this is outputting one amp at 32 E per tick. This one can output 16 amps at 32 E per tick and can hold a lot more. If we look at the tooltip at the top, the energy, this can store 50,000 EU, 200, 450, 800,000. Now if we go over here, I have two diesel generators set up into a four slot battery buffer. So I have one battery in there. Let's add a second battery. That is filling up. If I add a third battery, or two more, it's actually going to, as we can see, it's filling up left to right and then down. So if I take this out, it's going to fill that one up. If I put that in there, it's going to fill this battery up and it's going to stop filling this up, which this can cause some issues later on, which we will address. But basically what it's going to do is as soon as it fills up this battery, it should move on to this battery and then I'll move on to this battery. It doesn't charge up the whole battery buffer at once. There is no internal buffer on these battery buffers, unfortunately. Um, some versions of GregTech do. It will fill all batteries from an internal buffer, but these do not. So as soon as that fills up, it stops charging. It's going to move on to this one, and so on and so forth. If we put a fluid extractor down, I talked about these in the past. The fluid extractor is uses quite a lot of power. Uh, if we look at this, 32 EU per tick, which is a full voltage of LV power. It needs to be getting 32 EU per tick to work. Now, the cables, if all the different cables have loss per block. So if I put a tin cable down, I actually have to... If we look at this, the like I said, the batteries output one amp each. So there's four in here. There's four batteries with a charge. So this is going to be outputting four amps worth. If I put a 1x tin cable, it's going to burn up. If I put a 4x tin cable, it's not going to burn up. All right, so that's supplying the power to my fluid extractor. And as we can see, it's actually not getting enough power. And we're looking at this. Why is this not getting enough power? This is outputting 32 EU per tick. The reason for this is one of the quirks of battery buffers is it's only going to output one amp per battery. This needs 32 EU per tick. The machines can only accept one amp from the battery buffer. So it's outputting the 32 E per tick. It's getting a 31 with a loss. 30. This is only receiving 32 E per tick. As we can see, it's still working. It's getting enough to work, but is actually struggling with the power. You can see it actually loses a bit of progress there. And I can demonstrate this if I use superconducting wires. These have zero loss per block. If I put this down, that is actually getting enough power. 
Let me turn this off really quick and I'll fill up. There we go. So as we can see with the superconducting powers, this is getting enough power the 32E per tick because there is no loss. I'm not going to really get into loss and how cables work. I do have another video on that. I will put a link at the top. Um, but I'm not going to get too much into the, the loss in the cables. Now, if we break this for now and place the cables down, I have the two generators. And if we look at this, now it is actually getting enough power. The two generators. Let me grab another iron ingot. Go in there. All right. So that's weird. It needs one amp of 32e per tick. So why is it working with the two generators and it's getting enough power? So it's pulling enough from this and it's actually getting more from this generator. And I am not entirely sure. I'm not 100% positive on this, but I believe it's because the generators are outputting the EU. It's sending the, um, the power out. So it's sending the power to the generators, whereas the battery buffers, and this is totally guessing, do not automatically output the, the amps. So what this is doing is requesting the one amp that it needs, the 32. So only one of these batteries is outputting enough. And I believe that's how the battery buffers work. Um, which you can might be asking yourself, well, why would I ever want to use battery buffers? And one of the reasons you're going to want to do that is, I'm going to break these. I'm going to use the superconducting cables from now on. I'm not going to talk about loss anymore. Like I said, I've already been over that. Um, so we're not going to really get into that. But so the question is, why would you use battery buffers when having the two generators on there can power this where the battery buffer can't? And uh, the reason for doing that is adding multiple lines on to this, um, onto the, the line here. So I have the four amps, they're being charged up from two diesel generators if we put this down and put that in there, now that we've eliminated the loss with these superconducting cables, you can see it a little easier. These are both receiving enough power and the battery buffer isn't even changing. So it's using 32E per tick, it's receiving 32E per tick. That's why the battery buffer is not changing. The generators are inputting into the battery buffer, 32E per tick, so none of these are moving. And these are using. And that will be the same if I just connect these like that. Same thing. Yep, they're both working. They're both receiving the 32E per tick. Everything's great. Now, if I add a, well, before I do that, let's add a third one. And we'll add that there. And as we can see, these are working, they're working great. This one isn't getting any power at all. And the reason for that is all the amps are going into these two. This third one is not getting any power. Now, if I add a battery buffer here, oops, not that. There we go. Now I have all three machines running off two diesel generators. Now the problem here though, if we look at this, the battery buffer is actually going down now. So the um, the machines are using 32, 32, and 32, but we're only producing the uh, the two amps. We're only producing 64. So as we can see. We can actually run more machines with less generators if we use battery buffers. Now, obviously, I'm using superconducting cables. These aren't going to be obtainable early on. 
this is not going to work exactly like this if you use cables with loss in them. But I just used, I wanted to show how these work. So now I have four batteries. It's draining even faster now. It's draining two batteries, but it's running four at a time. I'm actually using uh, 256 EU per tick and only producing, or 128 EU per tick, but I'm only producing 64. Now this battery is going to run out. Now we're going to have an issue. So there we go. The batteries run out. Now I am only outputting three amps worth of power. And if I take this out, now I'm only producing That one is finished. Here we go. So yeah, these are gone. So the batteries only output, even though I have four batteries in here, the batteries only output if they have a bit of a charge in them. So I replace that. This has a charge in. Now it's going to be... Yeah, these can run now. If I replace that with an empty battery buffer, they can't run. So the battery buffers allow you to run more machines than you normally would with the amount of power that you are producing. I'm only producing 64U per tick, but I can run more with the batteries. Like we said, if I just connect these directly to the line, they can only run two. So this one's working, this one's working, but these aren't receiving any power whatsoever. So there are multiple ways to power your machines. Uh, battery buffers basically allow you to do store up the power and discharge it um, when needed. The best uses for battery buffers are kind of burst crafting. I'm running four machines here which are using more power than I'm generator so eventually this is going to run out but say if we pull all these out I'm doing a bunch of crafting all at once and let's say much power uh, We'll fill that one up a bit. All right, so we have two generators. It's going into the battery buffer. I have four machines, and all of a sudden, I need to do a bunch of crafting all at once. We'll fill these all up. There we go. We're using more power than we're producing. It's draining the batteries. But by the time these all finish, so I've only had to do a certain amount. There we go. They all turn off. They finish their crafting and then the battery buffer will start filling up again. So basically it allows you to store your EU per tick and use it in bursts. One of the best ways to use this with is for the blast furnace, because that is usually a higher tier than the generation you are powering. Now obviously if I want to, I can do, I can break all these, and I could, if I wanted to, put diesel generators on the back of all these, now I can run these constantly, 24-7, uh, because they're being supplied with enough power with the diesel generators. But you would also need, four, you'd also be need to be producing much more fuel in that regard. So it is a bit of a trade-off. You can either use less generators and store the power up for when needed, and then when you're not using it, they will be charging up. Or you can, if you need to run these machines constantly, for whatever reason, you can put the generators, like as much generators as you need per line. So there are multiple ways to power in Greg Tech. Now, one of the other ways that battery buffers are great for, if we do, let's say, Let's do three of these. We'll be outputting all that.
All right, so we have three basic diesel generators. They're outputting 32 low voltage. What I can actually do is put this on a, let's say, a medium battery buffer. There's the front. I can put medium batteries in there. And where are we? Let's do medium sodium batteries. So there we go. Now I am filling up medium voltage. Uh, a battery buffer with LV power. So I can put a medium voltage machine down here. So let's say the fluid extractor MV. Oops, I got the fermenter. That's not what I wanted. Want the fluid extractor just because this uses a lot of power. So this one is the MV. This requires 30, 128 you per tick. So it is using 128 you per tick. I'm producing 32.64.96. So I'm actually producing less than I can uh, less. Uh, EU per tick that I'm using. So as we can see, the battery is actually going down, but it is running. The machine is running perfectly. Now, if I did this, got rid of that, and just connected those uh, directly, as we can see, this is struggling because we're only producing the 96 EU per tick with the three generators. But if I put the, not that one, uh, the battery buffer. This runs fine. It's getting enough power because the one battery is outputting. But obviously, after a while, this is going to run out and we won't be able to power that anymore. So that is one of the main reasons to use battery buffers. It's for when you are not producing enough power, but you want to store it up and use it in bursts. Um, battery buffers aren't good for when you want to run machines constantly, like 24 seven, you're doing maybe producing oil or something like that. Um, Cause eventually these machines are going to run out. Um, so like I said, there are options to powering your machines. Um, most of the issues with Greg Tech Power actually come from a loss in the cables. Um, but like I said, I have another video on that if you would like to see how the Greg Tech cables work. All right, so that is how battery buffers work. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is transformers. So I have the MV battery buffer. Actually, let's go back over here. There we go. We have my MV battery buffer. And let's power this up with diesel generators, but MV diesel generators. So I just want to get this powered up. All right. So there is my battery. As we can see, it filled up that one and moved on to the next one, so on and so forth. You can kind of trick it to fill up which one you want. Whatever is in the first slot, it's going to fill up. So there we go. So, so now I have four batteries with some charge in it. This is going to output four amps. Now, what we can do, if we want, we have MV turbines filling up an MV battery buffer. But I want to run LV machines. And I'll put this way up. Oops. <laughs> That's fell off the thing. If I put obviously a basic fluid extractor here, this is an LV tier. If I put this down, it's gonna blow up because it got MV tier power. So that's not gonna work. But what we can do is output to a transformer. 
And what we're going to want is an LV transformer. So if we look at this, there is two transformers per tier. So this one can take in 32 or LV and output a lower tier, or you can take in a higher tier and output that lower tier. So this takes in MV and outputs LV. This one can take in LV and outputs ULV. So what we're going to do is put down this transformer. The big circle is the input and the small circle. Here, I'll do it on the side. So the big circle is the input and the small circle is the output. And that is with any uh, either way you have the, the voltage going in. If we look at the transformer, use the soft hammer to invert. And what that means is if I right click this with a hammer, this is actually transforming up now. So this is inputting, it's transforming up. If we look at the bottom tooltip, it's taking in 32 EU and outputting 128. And what this means is if we look at this, it's taking, if we have it transforming down, it says right here in chat, 128 amp, one amp, and it's outputting 32 volts of uh, four amps. So basically just splits it up. Whereas the other way, it needs to take in four and output one. But uh, like I said, this is the circle, the big circle and the small circle. And either way, if you're transforming up or down, the big circle is the input. So sometimes you would think, oh, I'm uh, transforming up. I'm going to have the small inputs take in the four amps, and then the big circle will output. That is not how it works. The big circle is always the input. Um, so if you wanted to send like the four LV amps, you would have it like that. And uh, And I was like, why did that burn up? That was a bit weird. Oh, I know why. I just realized. Because the batteries are trying to output 4 amps and they're going into the transformer and it's actually outputting them back. So this is using more cables than uh, I can handle. These can only handle four can Let's check that really quick. I actually just figured that out. So in theory, this is taking in the two amps and outputting four. Yep, so that's why. Okay, I never realized that. That's so funny, I just figured that out. So yeah, the Long story short, the small circle is always going to be the output, no matter if you're transforming up or down. All right, so these are outputting four amps at 128. Let's just double check. And the reason that blew up is because I switched it transforming in and the small circle or the large circle, which was the input, we look in chat, tried to take in 32 amps and it was too big for it, so the transformer exploded. So, got to be careful with the transformers for sure. Alright, so when we first place down the transformer, it's going to be the. It's always going to transform down as the, the first. Um, when you place it down, it transforms down. You have to hit it with a hammer. You hit it with a soft hammer, and it'll switch it to transforming up. So anyway, let's move on from that. So basically, it's taking in the 128, transforming it down into 4 amps of 32, 
and we can put our fluid structures back. And let's supply them all with iron. And there we go. They are all running, getting enough power with the the battery buffer. Now we are using 128. We are producing 256 here. So the batteries are staying full. It's going down here into the amps and it's feeding the machines and they're all running off power even though I have a medium battery buffer here. Now one problem that I have found out with the battery buffers, the transformers can only accept one amp. So if I add another fluid extractor on the end, let's get some iron. As we can see, we're not getting enough power now to run the five machines. Let's make sure these all have enough iron to test that. Yeah. All right, so that one is not working. So that one's working, that one's working, that one's working, that one's working. This one is not getting any power whatsoever. As we can see, the tooltip, zero. And that's because these transformers can only output, they can only accept one in and four out. But if we remember, these can output four amps. This battery buffer is outputting four amps here. And the way to get around this is actually adding a, another transformer. Now let's just double check. This is voltage in, 120 amp, output 32. I can add it here. Big circle is always the inputs. And then I can add another cable here. And the reason these burnt up is because now we're putting eight amps on this line. There's one going in here, there's one going in here, four out, four out, so there's eight amps. So if we connect with these cables, can only do four, they all burn up. But if we do the eight, there we go, they're all working. And now all the machines are getting enough power to run. So now I'm running five machines and I'm actually getting enough if I wanted to run eight. At once. So there we go. Now I have eight machines running. And then obviously if I add a ninth, this won't work. Yep, there we go, this one. Now I don't know how it chooses, like why does it choose this one when it's closer than this one? I don't know how that works. So, but the main takeaway from the transformers is they can only accept one amp in and four amps out. So this uh, medium battery buffer here can actually output 16 amps worth of voltage. Let's see, these cables can't handle that, obviously. Um, but if we look at this, oops. And uh, superconducting. So these handle 16. And we can connect all these. So there we go. As we can see, four amps of MV out to 16 amps of LV, and you can run all these machines off one battery buffer. Obviously, if you're using more power than this you're producing, this is eventually going to drain. Um, 
but yeah. But we can continue to go up this line if we want. We could even do um, an HV battery buffer. So we'll do one. And you can actually do it like this if you want. So we'll try this. Battery. Put the one battery in there. The diesel generator. There we go. So this is making HV power. It's going into the battery buffer. I can actually add a transformer. Just double check we have the right one. So this is high voltage, 512 down to 128. And I'll be careful with this. Um, whenever you place these transformers, the big circle will go towards you. So if I place it here, the big circle is on this side. So if we look at this. We're producing the 512 U per tick. It's going in the battery buffer. It's being transformed down into four amps of MV, which is powering the MV battery buffer, which is outputting the four amps now. That's being transformed down into 16 amps of LV power. So as we can see, you can go down the tiers here with higher, um, producing higher amounts of power and it grows exponentially. It's times four for each tier. So, oops. So I had a, uh, where's the battery buffer? I accidentally broke that. Yeah, all right. So there we go. So we have the one battery buffer or one battery HV four, and then I could even, you know, 16 batteries if I wanted at the, uh, the next tier. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's how the transformers work and they can also transform up. So if I say, let's just do, on this side. Actually, let's do this. So like I said, there's four medium batteries in here. This is opening four amps. You can actually transform up to a higher tier. All right, so high voltage. The large circle always goes on the input, small circle goes on the output, and now I'm actually going to right click this with a hammer. So now it's taking in four amps of 128, which this is outputting, and it's producing one amp of HV. And I can actually demonstrate that with the HV fluid extractor. And we only need the small cable because it's only outputting one. And let's just get some iron. And there we go. So now the fluid extractor is working. The HV, the higher tier, is being powered off a lower tier. Obviously, I'm not producing enough power. Well, I'm not producing any here. So these are going to drain eventually. But this is how you can transform up your, your power. But anyway, that's kind of a little bit of an explanation of how transformers and batteries work. Hopefully that was informative. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, I'm going to continue making tutorials when I come up with something to explain. So if anybody has any 
Uh, anything they want to see, uh, I'm all for getting suggestions on what to make. Anyway, that's going to be it. Hopefully this wasn't too long and boring. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and have a good one.